Welcome again, friends. Uh, 3C5 Basics. Uh, today, by God's grace, we keep moving on. And so today, I want to share with you on the Bible study we are continuing. We are on the book of Genesis. We started from the Genesis 12. And the previous video we covered on Genesis 12, uh, verse 1 up to 9. So today, we are going to start from Genesis verse 12. 12, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 10 up to 20, to find the messages which can help us today, to see what we can apply today from the, the Bible. Because uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, it is written that the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So that's what we need to start the Bible to find what can help us. What, is, what was the intention of the writer? So we're using several steps in interpretation of the Bible that can help us. We cannot go throughout all like textual translation or what, but we are going to use uh, contextual uh, analysis. means we, we, we have to, to, to find immediate context and use the larger context to find the meaning of the, of the, of, of the texts and find the message that is, uh, is there that we can use for our spiritual growth and application uh, of the life that we are living now. So welcome. Uh, verse 10 says, I'm going to use NIV uh, today. And most of the time I will be using different translations because I know there's no perfect translation. So every translation uh, has its weaknesses. And so I'll be using different translations so that we can find the meaning. The Bible says, but before that, that's up for the word of prayer. Father, please welcome you to help us and help me, Lord. You know how I need your strength. Please be with me and the one who is watching and listening from anywhere in this world. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So welcome, friend. Feel, feel blessed. Hallelujah. Feel blessed as we study. Verse 10 says, Now there was a famine in the land, and the Abraham went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. So talking about famine, uh, that's what the, the, the system, that's what the culture, when somewhere with the famine, some they had to live. And that to send people to buy, like how uh, Jacob did by, uh, by, uh, by sending his sons to go to Egypt to buy food. But sometimes they had to leave. And uh, we are going to see when we are going to reach on the issue of Isaac. But that was a custom that they had to go to where the, uh, the food was found. Either to buy or to stay there until the famine as passed. So it, it was like that. Verse 11 says, As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is wife, then they will kill me, but will let you alive. This shows what kind of people and what culture they had, the habits of that moment, how they lived. So this tells us if you had the good wife, the beautiful one, okay, the beautiful one, it was easy for you for you to to suck, to give up on her because somebody stronger than you uh, had a, a, the ability and power to take your wife. And we see that character happening in whom? In David, when he took Bathsheba the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So having a beautiful girl for that moment was a, a little bit challenge. But we see here what Abraham did was warring fear. Say you are, verse 13, Say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. So what happens here? Abraham acted as a normal person, not like a prophet of God. Because now he's applying the normal way of living, of living. Actually, it was normal for them to do that. 
That's why he chose to lie. That is that was how things were done. So he did not consider his relationship with God. Now he applied humanity, human behavior, and how to counteract some of the attacks and dangers in life. Verse 14. When Abraham came to Egypt, the Egyptian the Egyptians saw that Salai was a very beautiful man and she was old. <laughs> old years, but she was still beautiful. And when if Allah official saw her, they was praised. When Pharaoh's official saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh and she was taken into his palace. I mean, the discussion went on. Who is this? She was still beautiful, though she was mature. That's a woman of many years. But still, she was attractive. And so those officials, they saw her. Not Father the first. The officials saw her. And so they, they just got, uh, asked the information. And they went to follow and propose and, and say something good about her. And then after that, she was taken to his palace. He treated Abraham well for her sake, and Abraham acquired sheep, cattle, male, female donkeys, male, female servants, and camels. So he was well to do. He was rich. You can see here that Abraham was not poor. He was rich. He treated her and this one. But there's something that we don't know what was happening in the behind the scene. When I was studying this chapter, I found that there's something that Abraham did. Why did God intervene? Maybe when he was left there, maybe near, maybe evening alone, and think that I came with my wife, and now I'm alone. Though he had those servants, and, but but he thought that, what is this? There is God. So maybe that time he repented of saying, right, and he started to pray, please, God, help me, help me. This is, is torturing more than dying. You know, leaving your wife to somebody else, it's not an easy task. But because of fear of his life, he had to do that. He was ready to sacrifice his woman for his life. That's the weakness of Abraham. So when we talk about the father of faith, there are things that we need to consider that he was not perfect. He was, he was weak as we are. So we can be friends of God. Faith does not mean perfectness. But how do you use your faith toward God? We need to have faith in God. We face challenges, truly challenges, and very trouble and very big challenges. But how can we persist with God in faith? And then that's how friendship with our God, who is in heaven, grows. But the Lord inflicted a serious disease on Pharaoh and his household because of Abraham's wife Salai. So for someone, Abraham, what have you done to me? And they said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? So means the fear of Abraham was not real. It could not have resisted the same thing as people used it to do. Maybe he had heard the stories like that. And so he thought that maybe they are going to do it to me. What if I die? So it's better to prepare myself to use lie and other statements like she is my sister. Though at least she was as uh, uh, his sister, but still she was his wife. So the, the biggest title was, was a wife title. And Pharaoh said, why didn't you tell me? Means it was, it was not possible for a person to kill it because Abraham was very rich, moving, having camels, donkeys, and a lot of caterers. Why did you say she's my sister? So that I took her to my wife, to be my wife. When is now then here is your wife. Take her and go. 
Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So what the what the education what the, 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 the tips we can get? What will the intention of the writer tell us? God had promised Abraham to protect him wherever he goes. Abraham forgot his promise. Forgot the God's promise towards him. He was fearful. But God intervened. So what else can we learn? That even in your weakness point, still God will come and defend us. You have done something bad, sinful, stupid that you don't have to do. But still, because you belong to God, God will act on your side. God acting on your side is not depending on how perfect you are doing. It's because of your relationship. Though some people, they hate this word. But I want to say this one. If you are close to God, you will reach a moment when things won't be fine, won't, go, won't be going well. But still God will come on your side. Students can explain this clearly. When you enter into exams, as you know, do not do good preparation. But ask for God to intervene, help you not fail. And God does it. Why? It's not because you're perfect. It's not because you prepared well. But it's because he's your friend. He's there to help you because he knows your weakness. And he knows how weak you are. And so he comes to, to interact, to help you because he's your father and he's your friend. He's your companion. That's why we should not worry about challenges that are facing us every day of life. But still we can learn not to speak a lie. When we are facing the challenges, we should not speak a lie. Because sometimes it may cost a person. We will not be hurt. We won't be hurt. But it may hurt someone. Look what happened to Pharaoh's house. God did it. What we say, but the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household. Serious diseases. And maybe they started to ask, what's happening? And they were informed, it's because of this woman. So it tells us that when we are doing what is right before God, we will also make others be safe. But when we go against God, we may make even others suffer. To give you an example, we know what happened to David when he counted uh, the people in Judah, counting those nations, ex with the exception of Levites, but he, he counted to see those who were able to fight. It was just like a uh, pride to show the number of the soldiers, uh, fighters that he had that has, was a reason for his victory. But that was not a real reason. God was his defender and the one who helped him to fight and win the, the battles. But by doing that, almost 70,000 people died because of his sin. So when we don't do what is right, things may happen and hurt others. May God bless you for this Bible study. I believe when you get the time to read it yourself. It's a book of Genesis Chapter 12. We have read it from verse 10 up to 20. May God bless you. Let me meet you again. We are going to verse 30, to chapter 13 of Genesis in the next video. May God bless you. Amen.